Welcome to the celebration of the 18th Sunday in the ordinary time here at the Church of St. John the Commissary in Bohemia, New York. Presiding today's liturgy is Father George Schlaefer, our pastor, Deacon Roger Mott, and we have for our elector, Dorothy Cregan.
prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as our Creator and Guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come, without pain and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. Word of the Lord. Nor life, nor angels, nor mis- principles, 
principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Experience. 
We share a source of life together. We share the food on the table. But what we discover is that sharing a meal is about a lot more than filling our stomachs or becoming physically ready for the next part of the day. It's more than just physical. A meal sitting down together can, as I say, strengthen the bonds of affection and love. And I've heard that story not just in that conversation I had with that lady recently, but on more than one occasion. One, one man told me that he's learned more about what his children are doing at school and in other places than he ever knew. Because they were a family like so many families who are always rushed and hurried who will grab a bite here and there, but don't often have the opportunity to slow down and be at the table together. That thought of uh, eating being a holy experience that can feed us in more ways than just physically, can feed us emotionally and even spiritually, that, that idea could help us to understand what happened in today's gospel that Deacon Roger just read to us. Jesus used the whole concept of hunger and feeding as a way of communicating the truth about God and about God's love. The gospel tells us that he had been speaking to the crowds and teaching them. And not only that, but the gospel says he had been curing their illnesses, healing those who were sick. And after a while, they were hungry. And he says to his disciples, give them something to eat. And the disciples, there's not enough. There's five loaves of bread, there's two fish. And we have this miracle that we're familiar with because it's recorded in more than just Matthew's gospel, the other gospels as well. Jesus takes five loaves and two fish he says the blessing over them as he looks up to heaven. He begins to break the bread and pass it around the fish. And in some miraculous way, there's enough food to feed thousands of people. Thousands of people. There's a word at the end of today's gospel, the word satisfied. They were all satisfied. They had enough to eat. And more than being satisfied, there were 12 baskets of leftovers. This miracle is about more than just filling people's stomachs. It's about Jesus using food as a sign, as a symbol, not only for the fact that God feeds us with his love, but that God's love is there for us in a super abundant way. There's more than enough. There are leftovers. God's generosity, God's patience, God's willingness to welcome us back when we stray away from Him, God's forgiveness is there for us in a bountiful, superabundant reality. That's what this miracle is about. And we're meant to. Uh, to rejoice in that, to reaffirm our trust in that great love that God has for us. It makes me think of when I was first ordained a priest many years ago, and I went to my first parish assignment in St. Bridget's in Westbury, and the pastor there was a wonderful priest and a wonderful person he was able to reach out to the needs of so many different types of parishioners and welcome everyone into the family of the parish. But in addition to his many spiritual gifts, this pastor was a great cook. And he loved to invite anyone walking along into the rectory down to sit at the table and cook for them. He'd be preparing a dinner for some group in the parish, and he'd run into other people, and he'd say, will you join us too? There was always enough room at the table. That was how he operated. That was how he lived. That was how he loved. 
And he lived the spirit of what today's gospel is about. For today's gospel is really a challenge to all of us to remember that not only does God feed us in a super abundant way, but we have been called to go out and feed one another. And to know that we can do that physically here in our own parish and our outreach program, there's so many of you out there who keep bringing groceries to this building, which are then packed and divided for families. There are so many volunteers in our outreach program that bring those meals all over this community. But we're called to feed each other spiritually to feed each other with friendship. How can we feed others? How can you feed another person who may, may be frightened and anxious by what's going on in the world by just taking the time out to sit down and listen to them? You're, you're feeding them with friendship, with companionship, with love. How can you feed someone who's hurt you? By simply reaching out to forgive them. How can you feed someone who perhaps is going through a very difficult time because of a sadness or a loss by reaching out to remind them that God is with them, that God is walking through this Good Friday with them as they go through it and will bring them to another Easter Sunday. There's so many ways that we can feed others. And that's the challenge, I think, of this gospel. This Gospel also reminds me of a, another passage from Matthew's Gospel in chapter 25 when Jesus says why people are welcomed home to heaven. He says, when I was hungry, you fed me. And these good and humble people who are being welcomed home to the new life of his kingdom say, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry? And he says, Whenever you did it, for any of my brothers or sisters, you did it for me. It is a profound truth in that statement that Jesus makes. Whenever we reach out to feed the need of another in some spiritual, emotional, intellectual, psychological, or physical way, whenever we touch the need of another person, we're touching Christ. I long for the day when more and more of you will be able to come back to this room where I now stand and be fed on God's greatest gift, the sacrament of the Eucharist, the presence of Jesus among us. He feeds us so we can go out into the world and offer the gift we receive here to others. He also feeds us by the words of Scripture. He also feeds us by the way we share fellowship and friendship and company with each other when we're together. Lord, we pray to you in this Mass, recognizing that the Lord, that the, the world we live in is enormously hungry right now, especially for healing, healing from the pandemic, healing from fears and anxieties, healing from hurts that have occurred because of losses in the last several months. We are hungry for all those things. But for Jesus, there's always enough. He's always got more than enough love to provide for our needs. And he tells us that if we can trust in that, we will have enough to feed each other. Let's go back to the table of the Lord. Pray in thanksgiving for the ways that he feeds us through the Eucharist. And know that he's giving us the strength and the wisdom and the power of his Holy Spirit. It's that same spirit that we invoke upon the bread and wine. He's giving us the wisdom and power of that spirit to go out and feed a hungry world. Lord, give us the strength to do it and help us to trust in you so that we will know the joy of your kingdom, a kingdom that is often characterized by a banquet table where one day we will all sit together and know the joy and the peace of the Lord's Supper which feeds us
and helps us to know the great gift of his presence and of his love. And now we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With hopeful hearts, we bring our needs to God, whose love is stronger than death and who nourishes us with the bread of life. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may Christ continue to bless her with his strength and wisdom to bring his love to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in position of authority, may God grant them compassion and wisdom in their decision making. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those traveling the long road of grief, may they know Christ's presence and rest in the confidence that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick in our parish, especially Pavlin, Doi, uh, and for all who suffer from any kind of addiction or chronic illness, that they may receive healing, hope, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Edward Grote, Vincent Manino, and Michael Hopkins, and all those who have lost their lives in the coronavirus pandemic, that they may be welcomed home into God's loving presence. And for their family, may they be comforted by the power of the Lord's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in the medical profession, and for those who care for the sick, that God will give them strength and perseverance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For comfort and strength for all who demonstrate and protest peacefully and for all who risk their own safety in the law enforcement to preserve our freedom and our way of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the parishioners of St. John's Church, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass today, and for all the intentions within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we bring you these needs today, confident in the power of your love and the abundance of your generosity, as we pray through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Pray to the Lord for his name, for our good and for all this holy church. Graciously, make holy these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the offering of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for all the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, Jesus offered himself to you as the unpunished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful people by this sacred Eucharist. You make us holy so that the human race, founded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of love. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities that are foreshadowed in this sacrament. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, as without end, we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We 
offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people, remember our loved ones who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have gone to their rest in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with John Nepomucene and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we may praise and glorify you forever through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
May the blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Thanks be to God. 